previously. How you going, Steve? What's going on with Bryce? Anything or not? 47 all in. Yep. It's like, no, mate. I want 50. There's a banana on Squizz's boat with his face on it. We threw it on there last night. It's lobster season. Fucking another octopus. In the waters off Tasmania's west coast. Oh, I'm starting to think Bryce might have put a banana on our boat. Three hardcore lobstermen are battling for the biggest catch and the best price. He has massive balls. You fucking little cunt. You fucking little shit. You know how much bad luck that is? You don't do that, people. Are you coming in for a barbie tomorrow night, Bryce? You probably want to have plenty of padding around your body. <laughs> you steamed up in front of us. I zigzag when I was shooting your gear and you started fucking sitting in front of us. What the fuck are you doing, mate? What the fuck are you doing? I didn't know that was the rules there, so... Oh, fuck me! If I had a gun on board yesterday, I probably knew he would have fired a shot at you. If I go and catch up with Glenn on the beach, I think there might just be a little stab in the back. As the sun rises, so too do pots full of lobsters for the Anson's Bay crew. It's peak season on Tasmania's west coast. 12! Fucking look out! Crazy aren't a bad size, so hopefully they keep coming up consistently and it'll be a uh, good morning. Oh, there's a nice few craves in that one too. I like it. Skipper Snotty and the boys secretly beat the fleet to sea. They have a boat full of fish. We're on a fucking roll, mate. But no one who'll pay the right price per kilogram. So our last offer was 47 bucks. 47, don't cut it. We want 50 because at three dollars, that makes all the difference. It's going to cover the costs and we'll make something out of it. So. I'm not sitting out here for 19 days to lose money, pretty much, so I want 50 bucks. Yeah, bloody, it's another beautiful day on the west coast here today, and we, yeah, we're going to go ashore for a barbie tonight with the boys, so looking forward to that. Light a little fire and might have to have a quiet beverage. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Bryce. Like, I've told him why I'm not happy, and. Bryce knows if he does it again, it's just that's not what I like, so he's been warned pretty much. What do we got? A yes and a maybe. I'm not 100% sure whether I beat the other two up. I think they're still thinking about their beach dinner this afternoon. I might pull up to the barbecue and offer a meat sacrifice. Wouldn't surprise me if I got to the beach and Glenn was going to do something to me. I don't know if I can trust him or not. He's got two young fellas on his boat that probably want a bit of a game as well. If I don't make peace with Glenn today, so be it. You know, I plan on Shooting twice a day, there's only a bit of a weather window and I don't really want to fuck about, so we're not here to fuck spiders. We're here to catch lobster. Strong westerlies are expected to hit the west coast of Tasmania in 48 hours. The weather on the west coast can get horrific. You've got five, six metre waves, 40, 50 knots coming. You seriously are in danger. You just need to be ahead of the game when it comes to the weather. The lobsters, they won't get in your pots. They know it's coming as well. They're a smart little creature. While the weather's good, we've got a nice window, and we really need to get in and start getting some more lobsters on board. Where's all the lobos, Loggy? I don't know. They're not fucking around this morning. Every shot, we tend to set the minimum at about 100 lobsters. Our money's not earned until our pots are lifted. How many lobsters in this one, Loggy? Uh, well, there's bull kelp. 
So there is none. If you're not catching fish, you're not earning money. Now, I've got a family to feed. What do you reckon, Logie? Should we uh, get a second deckhand, mate? Not really. You want to share two two lots of sweet fuck all? Uh, no. Because you know what that is. What? Two lots of nothing is... Negative nothing. Negative nothing. I don't know how people have two crew at the moment. It's not viable to have one. With the potential of the market price now coming up, this boat holds a lot of fish, and we need to start putting a lot of fish on it. Now, if Glenn can get $50 a kilo, it's a start. The processor tanks are empty. This boat needs at least one tonne minimum before we go home. Hockey! How many lobos have we got this morning? Seven. But price rise won't mean much to us if we don't start catching more lobsters. I think a good result would be if we can beat yesterday's. If we do that, I'll be happy. Yesterday. Squeezy landed 354 lobsters. Here's the first pot now, so hopefully there's good things to come. A good shot today will propel him closer to Snotty's big head start. Glenn might have more fish on board, but technically, the way this game's played, I'm in the lead. You can't cheat like that, mate, so we're scrubbing that number off, and you're back to zero. I uh, got four out of that one. Not a bad start. Touch wood. Octopus tapes. We are the octopus kings. Should have been octopus fishermen. I found the banana. I got rid of the banana, but. The bad voodoo is still on this boat. This trip so far, I've never seen the Ockies this bad. They are just smashing us. They are my number one enemy, just above Bryce. Oh, I can knack at everything. Yeah, you know, they'll inject them with an enzyme and suck all the meat out of them. So the meat comes out of the shell real easy. It's supposed to be translucent, not white. Octopus sells for $10 to $15 per kilogram straight off the boat. Much, much less than the lobsters killed. I hate octopus, and it just seems over the last three days, mate, they've beaten us to a pulp. The full moon's out, which makes them uh, very active. Got another Ocky in that pot. Fucking wiped out heaps of the currents. You killed four out of that pot. Would you be happy with a fucking paycheck getting ripped out of your hands? I'll say four out of this one. Oh! I told you they live here, mate. They're the things that lift your spirits. Just nice, chunky fish. Fuck yeah. We got 79 out of 20 pots. Each full pot leads to an even fuller tank. With more than 1,700 lobsters on board, it's crunch time for Snotty. We're starting to get a few fish in now, like, and we've really got to keep the boat moving, like, play about and a bit of swelling that to keep the fish alive. If the fish die on us, that we get nothing. We've caught, we've done all this work for nothing. So we're just getting to that stage where I'm starting to stress now. Like we've got that many fish in. Like it's it's I'm playing on me mind now. It's like I want to really get rid of them if we can. So it's it, it's a hard one. I mean, with the price so volatile, futures and fortunes can change in a heartbeat. I 
call you back. Hang on, mate. Steve. Hang on, boy. Oh, we're just bloody filling in the days, mate. Just filling in the days. Going through the motions. Yeah. What are you up to? You getting rid of any fish or what? We've been flat out. Two days. Two loads a day. Oh. Well, that must sound like positive news, mate. It sort of is, yeah. I found a buyer last night and I need a bit of commitment out here. Oh, I think I like where this is going, mate. Yeah, um, What's going on? Um, 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 I've got to let him know whether you're agreeing to $50 all in. Mate, you know that's what I've been waiting out for. <laughs> if you said you'd give me 50 all in, I'll bloody come home now, mate. Yes, no, 50 all in. Yeah, but I need him in today to pull the deal off. I'm keen. Like, I've been waiting for this call. $50, that's what I wanted, so I'm keen. I'm, I'm going to make this happen. Right. Would you um, would you be happy to come to Southport and get them? Yep. You would? Oh, well, that'll work out bloody well for us, mate, because that'll save us an extra bloody couple of hours steaming. So if you're happy to do that, I'd be bloody stoked to just go in there and get rid of them. So from up the west coast, it's going to take us about nine hours to steam to Southport to unload, so... Oh, well, that sounds bloody good then, mate. We're all go now. We're all go because it's just... It means we're going to get rid of our fish, so... We already sold 1.2 tonnes, right? You got more than that on? Yeah, mate. Yep, yep, no, we have. Sounds awesome. We're both happy by the sounds of that, then. Yeah. Lock it in, though. That's the main thing, and I can let him know that his least fish coming. Yeah. Ah, oh, bloody beauty, mate. I'm glad we sat out now, so... I'm glad you found that buyer. Can you thank him, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get the fresh ready. Ah, oh, you're a bloody good man, Steve. Bloody beauty, mate. That's a bloody yeah, best phone call I've had for a few days, so... <laughs> we need everything to go to plan to pull this off. If it don't, we're in trouble. Hey you there, old boy. Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, we're going back to unload, mate. Yeah, we won't be able to do the old Barbie. Ah, uh, yeah, Roger. Change of plans then. What's the price going up, is it? Apparently, yes. Very good. Can you get the number you wanted? Roger said he was happy to give us 50, so we're happy to be heading south, mate. Go and get rid of them. You got any more to pull over? Ah, uh, 40. Have a sleep in, mate. Yeah, well, that's what we can do. Have a sleep in, not worry about a day shot, and just come up to you. That's what our plan was. Not doing a day shot today has probably cost us a couple of thousand dollars. You know, at the end of the day, I should have just concentrated on fishing. It's probably a lesson learnt. If you come to sea, go fishing and stick to fishing. Forget the parties. I'm happy to be fucking going this way, to be honest with you. They've been in there a while. All right. We'll get into it, mate. Hope it all works out well for you, and we'll uh, see when you come back. Thanks, mate. Good luck there this morning. We'll catch up. He's got the jump on us, and he's had an home to unload at $50 a kilo. I wish we could swap boats. I've cheated, and now I'm going home to unload. So now all we've got to concentrate on is putting fish on this boat, and hopefully the price stays at 50 or even better. Anything less than 100 lobsters this shot, we're going to start going backwards. I reckon the other guys will be at 5 to 10 every pot. Probably. At the moment, it's just not looking good. So I hope these pots are full of lobsters. And if the lobsters aren't there, I don't know what we're going to do. Not bad, Loggy, not bad. I wonder how Squeezy's going this morning. That's what we call a good pot. I'm the king, you're the killer. I'm coming up like a winner. Couple of Libby lobs. They're fatties. Yeah, they're nice. Like a winner. It looked like a good shot, but looks can be deceiving. This morning was our worst shot so far. I uh, 
Shot all the gear in last night. I wasn't really focused on where I was doing it. I just really wanted to get them in because it's not every day as someone says, if I had a gun on board, I would have shot at you. Just makes it really hard to concentrate. So we did end up with 94. The problem is we just need more. We need consistency. We've really got to zone in on what we're doing, where we're fishing, work out what's working, what's not, what depth is, what depth isn't. 94 is not good enough. If you're not catching fish, you're not earning money. And with the current prices of things, you need fish coming over that rail. So it's just about finding where these lobsters are. Squeezy told me the other day he had a 74. So technically, if our worst shot's 94, we may have still beaten Squizzy, but whether he's telling the truth, it's up in the air. Where are you off to? Yeah, no, we're going back to unload, mate. Just Steve just rang there just before and um... said he was happy to give us 50, so we're happy to be heading south, mate. Go and get rid of them. 50? That's a big increase from nothing to 50. He's been a fucking long wait, though. I uh, will make a few phone calls now, I think. If it's gone to 50, then I better go up another gear and start trying to actually catch something, I think. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to have a barbecue when you get back, mate. Oh, yeah? Sadly, the uh, cook-up of Bryce has been cancelled. Hey, I'm all for it. I don't mind not going to the beach this time. Maybe next time. Uh, just coming up alongside old Squiz here. We'll see if he gets anything out of this pot. We'll see if he's been lying to us or not. Yeah, this will be interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm ready to listen to this one. Well, watch it, mate. I think we're in El Primo spot here. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't turned the boat, so I can't see, actually. Still coming, mate. Still coming. Was there even a cray in that? I don't think there was. I don't think he's lying to us, Bryce. <laughs> Go real. I can see old Tove is still at the rail there with his head hanging down. I think he's a bit disappointed. I don't think he'd be real happy with Squizzy this morning. Yeah, I, he might have to get that bloody banana off his roof. If he gets the banana off his roof, he'll do all right. Yeah. I don't like being close to you. I don't trust you with your bananas. <laughs> Mate, Squizzy was, uh, not expecting it, I, I may as well just say it over the radio now. Well, when we pulled up the other day and you, you were talking to him and then you left and we pulled up, he turned around for one second, so I just yeeted a banana up onto his roof. Didn't even realise. And it's been up there ever since. It's even got a picture of his face on it. Bryce is going to get himself into trouble here shortly, like throwing a banana on Squeezy's roof and what he's done to us, like... He, <laughs> he's playing a dangerous game, the boy, he really is, like... Just remember, Bryce, paybacks, mate. Paybacks. Ah, so you did find yourself. Just, uh... I'd like to apologise to your old man right now. Oh, why is that? I'll call him up. He's cocky. You gotta give him that. But at the end of the day, mate, you're starting a war, and I'm gonna make that chieftain look like an omelette. There's Squeeze is threatening violence now, Loggy. Nothing like threatening someone over a banana. Not a banana. What did he say? He said, I'm going to have to apologise to your father. Egg NATO, I reckon. I'm not fucking cleaning it. We shall be anchoring nowhere near them. We're floating out here today, and our gear is going nowhere near them for the rest of the trip. <laughs> I'm going to forget all the bullshit. I'm going to forget the markets. I'm going to forget the bad voodoo. Forget about these octopus. Forget about Bryce. I'm just going to concentrate 105% on how to catch them lobsters. Because I think the price might creep right up. It's come on, baby. Come on. We need more fish in the tank. Really nice fish. Really nice. Nice and chunky. 
just the morning of the octopus. I reckon we've lost, I don't know, maybe 15 size fish to octopus this morning so far. So we're getting out of Octopus Bay and uh, we're heading up a bit further to the north. We'll jump over where Glenn's been and we'll jump over Bryce and get in front of them. And try our luck there. The night shot tallies are in. Bryce and Lockie's 94 is the worst shot of the trip so far. The Octopus Consortium has made sure Squizzy and Tabor won't catch Snotty today. But they are in front of Bryce, landing 111. Snotty steaming home with an extra 181 fish in the tank and a $50 a kilo deal locked in. They all looking good, mate. His strategy worked. He beat the pack caught big red lobsters, and now he's the first to sell, commanding the best price. Yeah, no, they, they're pretty lively. Of the 1,800 plus lobsters on board, two thirds will be sold locally. The rest are destined for international markets, including Hong Kong, Vietnam, and the US. So we've got about three hours to get back to Southport. We're going to drop the pots. That's going to take us another hour or so to chuck them in, so, yep. The pending sale doesn't mark the end of Snotty's fishing trip. With the price up and the fish on the run, he's decided to come back out. We'll just keep trying to make hay while the sun shines, so... Yeah, it should be good. Should get about seven or eight grand out of it, hopefully. What are you going to do with your money, Kai? Piss it up the wall. I was going to say, probably put it in the fucking pokies. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <clears throat> and then have to come and borrow money off me fucking next trip to get smokes. <laughs> Big old cash money club over here. <laughs> While the boys at the Anson's Bay work out how to spend their pay... Hey, Squizzy. Bryce and Squizzy are looking for a payday of their own. You talk to anyone, buyers or anything like that this morning? No, I haven't. Probably should. Yeah, okay. What's your what's your thoughts if they're talking fifty? What are you what are you thinking? Ah, uh, keep working. That's what I think. Yeah, you just worry about the brindle price. That's all. So all our lobster, both reds and brindles are the same. The colour might be different, but they are the same species of lobster. Some people say the brindles taste a bit sweeter, the reds taste better, doesn't matter. It's the same species. Red lobsters are caught inshore from depths from about 20 fathom, 22 fathom, and they're red due to what they eat and the sunlight, algae and all that sort of thing. But offshore lobsters are basically 24 fathom and deeper, and they're whiter in colour due to less sunlight I guess the food they eat's just not the same, the red algae and things, I believe, and that's, that's what changes their colour. Working out which ones to target can be tricky. The brindles are more abundant, but the big reds fetch a higher price. It all comes down to what the market wants and what they're willing to pay. Yeah, righto, yep. No, that's my brindle price can come up five bucks, I'll... Uh... Start chasing them, I think. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't know. It's a hard one, mate. Yeah, yeah. I might give Salco a buzz and some other people. We're currently betting that this price is going to rise. If it doesn't, I don't know what we're going to do. Hey, guys, Squizzy. Not bad, Dave. Just ringing up for super duper good news. What, how much is, um, what's the beach price? Oh, no good news at the moment. Um, 40 for the windows and 45 for the reds. The market, you can't read it. You honestly can't. The beach price is crap. Still crap. Glenn's getting 50. 
and that's what I want, at least. Um, Glenn got his 50 all in. Glenn Jago? Yeah. Uh, Is he unloaded? He's on his way now. That's a good price. Yeah. But you'll get your best price, mate, next week, I reckon. Look, at the end of the day, we want the best price we can get. So I've got to go where the best price is. In this business, this industry at the moment, it's the same shit every day. It's the same price as what it was when we left. It all sounds uh, not bright, to say that. But he thinks it might go up next week. So do you load, do you work hard and try and <sighs> put heaps of lobsters on? Or do you just sort of ease off a bit and play safe? I don't know what to do, to be honest. I'm going to give uh, one of my buyers a ring. Um, they're a small um, restaurant in the centre of Hobart that they can go through a lot of lobster. So I've been doing some pretty good deals with him lately and getting like five dollars more than what I'm getting offered from processors, instead of going 10, 15 more that I could get from him, I offer him less, so he takes larger quantities. The catching is the easiest part of fishing. The hardest part is selling your lobsters. When it comes to the buyers of my lobsters, these are relationships my father's built. Now, at the same time, I can't just rely on what my father's built. I need to start going out on my own. Hey, Bryce, how you doing? Good job yourself. Yeah, yeah, good. So, being young, on my toes, I'm looking for other avenues, other venues, other places to go to, other ways of getting an income. Fish processors are currently paying $40 per kilo for brindles. Getting $5 extra on top by selling direct to restaurants could turn a loss into a small profit. It's a clever move, if it works. How are things going? Uh, fish aren't too bad. We are moving spots. It's going to be really hard to tell number-wise. But a few one and a half kilos sort of things. But what what yeah. will you guys be after if you're after any fish, like six, eight hundred yeah. grams or a bit bigger? Yes, yeah, six to eight work well for us. You got a price in mind at the moment? Well, I was about to ask you the same thing. I mean, um, 45 is what, what we sort of did for that last load. How's it looking from there? I think at the moment, with current beach prices, that'll be the go. I mean. If the brindle price rocketed up to 50, 55 or something, then, you know, I wouldn't expect you to pay anything more than that as well. So that would make a, a big difference for us. Yeah, I'm sure. No, that's fine. We'll just um, we'll keep in touch about it. And, and if things start moving, just let me know and we'll, we'll make sure we can make it work for both of us. I'll try and get the tanks nice and empty so we can get a good load, um, hopefully about 300 kilos or so if you... Oh, wow, that would be awesome if you could. Him taking 300 kilos, it's a $13,500 payday. It's a start. Sounds good. I'll talk soon in a couple of days. Yeah, all right. Cheers, mate. Good luck. Happy fishing. Cheers, John. All the best. Thank you. Now we've got the order, it's time to start catching them. Yeah. Yep. We're off the Bay of Islands. There's no rock-solid plans in this game. Things just change, just like with Glenn today. He's going to catch up for a barbecue. Now he's steaming home and unload. And we've uh, come north. When you're at sea, time is money. You're better off to put fish in the tank than no fish in the tank. So I didn't have a full day shot, so we're going to have a half a day shot, just to make them losses smaller. Each lobster boat is equipped yeah. with 52 pots. Squizzy will drop 30. And he needs each one to be full, if he has any hope of turning today around. Let's try and get some money back. The least Snotty could do is throw some of his luck Squizzy's way. The Anson's Bay steams into Southport. How you going, Steve? All going to plan. It's about to be payday. Is it? At the wharf? Yeah, that's black. Oh! Yeah, right. Oh, shit. Ryan, you just come here and drive, Ryan, for a sec. Where do you want me to go? 
just go up here another 100 or 200 metres and then just pull her out of gear. Reggie. Oh, Steve just called and said that there's a lot of fresh water at the wharf. Fresh water and lobsters don't mix. That kills them, so we can't afford that to happen. We're going to have to shut our bungs off and pump out before we get to the wharf. Yeah, I'm glad he rang, so at least we, we can just do this now. Shut the bungs off, pump her out, and get these babies out. They aren't babies, man. They're, oh, they're old ones. Get the, get the fucking clunkers out. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't shut the bungs off properly and there's fresh water there, that's still coming up through the boat and getting into the end of the lobster tank. Oh, get out of the fucking way, you can't. If the lobsters are in fresh water for too long, bang, they die. This has cost me a lot of money to catch these greys, and we've put in a lot of work, so we can't afford to lose them. Definitely got all six. We need every one of them crazy to be alive and get our $50 for us to cover everything and make a little bit of money, so that's what we need. Do you want me to pull up and when you can't side, just may jump straight up and put this springer straight under that back pipe? That... Oh, someone will grab the springer, mate. Yeah. It's all in Christ. Hello, stranger. Day, mate. Long time no see. Long time no see, all right. After 19 gruelling days at sea, Snotty arrives with just moments to spare before his end of day deadline. Where I want to throw the bins in, I'll throw them off about there. Yep. I'm nearly starting to feel relief, like, because. I know that these lobsters are about to come off the boat and we've put a lot of hard work into keeping these alive, so if we start unloading they look healthy, I'm going to be happy. We're ready to go, mate, if you are. Look, if these lobsters are, are looking sick, they haven't got much life in them, like, Steve's not going to be happy. We've worked hard for these reds. That's good. You're not paying <laughs> you hard for them, That's too. good, mate. <laughs> Works both ways. Snotty's wholesale lobster buyer, Steve, has been in the game over 30 years. He only deals with fishermen he likes, and so far, Snotty's never let him down. Oh, there's a risk. There could be a lot of dead fish. There is no doubt about it. Like, we've held on to them for a long time, so I'm just hoping that we've done everything right and, and they come out good. They all looking good, mate? Hi. If they're sick, he will not be able to give us $50 for sick fish, so... All looking all right? Yeah, no, they... Oh, that, that's good. They're pretty lively. That's a bit of a relief. Some more bins, Steve, please. Bit of variety, Steve. You got some little ones, some big ones. They all measures, mate. Well, we need that. Remember, I told you what the order You've was. You've got the, yeah, exactly. the, range, the order, so. yep. You just get what you're given, mate. Right. Yeah. Good girl. Hmm. Is, is the cuddle you wanted? Yeah. <laughs> Being back home, even well, briefly, gives Snotty a small but precious window to reconnect with partner Donna. It's good to come in and unload and see the missus and have a coffee or whatever and... I fucked. Yeah. Do I look fucked? You look tired. It's hard. It would have been nice to stay at home, but that's the way it is. It's just the industry we're in. That's what I've got to do. Time at sea means time away from loved ones. And it never gets easier. It's hard work being a fisherman. And as you get older, you've got a family, you miss time with them. You know, you miss kids' birthdays. And that's what people don't realise. You miss a lot of stuff. You don't get it back, you can't get it back. Yeah, okay, ready? Here comes a pot. Big difference between when I was a kid versus what Dad 
was doing is I'm able to talk to my daughter all the time. Lockie, Uncle Lockie will hold it. Is that shark? What's he doing? He's waving. He's saying hello. He's waving his tail. Hello. Hello. We put him back. You could go 20, 30 days without seeing your father, really only talking to him here or there. It, growing up, it was just a part of life, and, and not seeing him was a part of life, and you feel like you lost a chunk of your father during that period. So for me, I don't want that to happen to, between me and my daughter. Bye-bye, I love you. Bye. But Glenn's epic trip came with a silver lining this time, a chance to strengthen his relationship with son Ryan the future of the Jager fishing dynasty. I don't know how I would have done it if Ryan wasn't on board. Like, he kept me going, like, just his cheeky little ways. Like, I love him to bits. Like, he's just, he just, he's got a way of picking me up, so. And I really needed that, because I've, I've been out a long time, and she's hard work out here on a rolly boat. I don't know how I would have got through it without him, actually. It was bloody, I loved it. How many dead ones on that side, boy? Oh, uh, four. That's pretty good for all that time. I'm bloody happy with that. So we probably had about 15 dead ones all up, so... I think we got away with that pretty well. Like, well, I'm happy with it, so... They they come out of there bloody beautiful, so... There's nothing more we can do. She's all on Steve's end now. Oh, still crunching. Still got 30 crunches to go. I'm halfway. Crunch in numbers, <laughs> mate. In my favour. You can only you can only crunch what's it's there. Always I in your favour. Look at the price I've done for you. Top price in the state again already. Snotty gets paid based on the total weight of his catch. He doesn't weigh every fish at sea. So his guesstimate of 1,600 kilos is based on years of experience. If he's way out, it could jeopardise the entire deal. <laughs> you better come up and have a look. What was you taking, Valium and doubling your numbers, or what was you doing? <laughs> I think old Steve might be just having a bit of a joke with me, really, like, cos I'm, I'm not wrong very often. We might have to pull them out and rewire them, mate. We can. Come on, up you come. <laughs> I hope I'm not wrong. I'm not liking the sound of this. <laughs> How close is that? 1570. Fuck, <laughs> You're two baskets short. Mm. I think that's pretty close, don't you? You had me worried then, mate. So that's a pretty lazy 78 and a half grand check for you. Fucking thank you, mate. Great deposit, actually. I think I fucking deserve it, the way I feel. <laughs> he takes the lobster, so I get the check. Now I start divvying the check out <laughs> to everyone else. Cheers, old boy. Hopefully they're good, mate. Thank you very much for that. 19 days at sea. Hey, babe. And only an hour on the wharf. With the price looking up, there's money to be made for all skippers. Hey, it's Bryce. How you going? Off the Chieftain. Kent, son. Just wondering how you guys were going at the moment. Hope you got good news. I don't want any bad. If they can find the right buyer. $50 all in. Don't ring otherwise. Mail 116. Today we've gone for the uh, Brindle lobster. All these Brindles we're catching now, we use these to fill the uh, restaurant orders. After a horror shot of 94 fish this morning, the worst of the trip so far, Bryce is facing a massive loss if things don't turn around. That looks like a seven, eight sort of fish pot. This might be the place to be tomorrow, Loggy. This is what we're promising here. These last few have filled those bins, so get out the last one. 11 out of the last one, and the one before that was nine. 10. Fish this size, we can get about 35, 40 a bit. And there's fish everywhere. Got some counting to do here, Bryce. 
As Squizzy would say, yeah, baby. If it can stay consistent, I'll be happy, and the price coming up, I'll be even happier. Glenn getting 50 is good, but we've got to do our own thing, and I think at the end of the day, we might be better off anyway. So we may be better off because we've got these smaller markets. Just because you get that one good payday doesn't mean that uh, everything's all, all shiny. It's, uh, it's definitely, you need a few in a row to make it work. On this 30 pot shot, we've got about 24, about two a pot we're about getting, but they are reddish, so instead of chasing brindles, we're chasing red ones. It's just uh, feels a bit weird for me. It's just uh, the way the market is. Squizzy, how are you? What's going on? Oh, not too much yourself? Uh, not much. Just having a day shot on the reds. You having a day shot on the reds? Yep. How's that going for you? Oh, yeah, killing the pig. Going really well. Ah, uh, that's the, yeah, yeah. This is our first shot on Prindles and... Ah, uh, you're a fair way out there, bro. I'm fucking staying away from you, mate. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to ring your dad and just, like, apologise before it all happens, I think. Oh, well, when are you going to come out of hiding? Mate, we're staying on the Morris tonight. Oh, shit. No, I'm not joking. I don't trust you one bit. Ain't no one getting me while I'm sleeping, mate. How many did you get this morning? We counted three saying at the same time. All right, then. Three, two, one, 94. 191. 91 and 94, that's what I heard. 90. <laughs> I said 191. Oh, we beat him again, Lockie. I said 191. Oh, 191? Yep, 191 this morning. Lockie, we got flogged. We got to change that. We got flogged. I was about to say. <laughs> That'd put you on about, what's that? You'd be on about nearly 600 lobos now, wouldn't you? Uh, no, no way. No way, mate. No way. That's what we're on. I'm going to pull my finger out then. All right. I'll get going. No, get these right. up. If he's telling me the truth of what he's catching, he's about doing about the same as us. I told him we got 191 this morning just to uh, mess with his head a little bit. When you have a good shot, tell him it's a bad one. When you have a bad one, tell him it's a good one. There's only one problem with that. I haven't been writing down what I've been telling him, so I don't have a clue what I've been telling him. I've got to, I might have to start writing it down. Have a bullshit book. I don't know if Bryce is telling the truth, but I suspect he is. I'll be devastated if I'm wrong.